language seems to me to grow in the mind rather in the way that familiar physical systems of the body grow. We begin uh, our interchange with the world with our mind in a certain genetically determined state and uh, through an interaction with experience, uh, with an environment, this state changes until it reaches a mature state, which we call a state of knowledge of language. Noam Chomsky needs little introduction. In many ways, he is known as one of the largest public intellectual figures in the 20th and 21st century, primarily known for his work and writing in the realm of political and cultural theory. His critiques of media relations in the 20th century, American foreign policy, and his vocal support of newer modes of governance, such as anarcho-syndicalism. That said, as many know, this wasn't his main academic discipline or focus. For all of his genuinely deserved popularity on his writings around politics, linguistics was his main academic angle. Not only this, Chomsky was one of the main players in a large paradigm shift regarding linguistics in the 20th century. Yet, traversing the academic realm around Noam Chomsky and any secondary resources on his linguistics seems to be rather tough, or at best, simply inaccessible. And further, regarding online videos around Chomsky's linguistics, there's hardly any on the topic on YouTube other than specific lectures. There only seems to be the million plus videos on manufacturing consent. Here, I hope to explain Chomsky's lingual foundation, the backdrop in which we can place him regarding philosophy and other intellectuals, along with some potential, but often misunderstood overlap with his political theory. With this, we will be taking primarily from Chomsky's syntactic structures and language and mind. Before we get into the core of the video, I want to say I am not a linguist, nor am I particularly trained in said field, so I will refrain from going into the absolute degree of detail. But with the lack of accessible resources online, my interest in the quiet side of Chomsky, and my very difficult process of reading syntactic structures, along with language and mind, I felt compelled to make this video, despite its seemingly boring character compared to the 20 plus videos on Chomsky and Herman's manufacturing consent, and the bizarre abstract political fetish around Chomsky himself. And kind of your political opinions over the course of time. And so it made big news, understandably, uh, a few months ago when you came out very strongly um, advocating for leftists who at the time were many of whom were very, you know, frustrated by the way the primary season ended to uh, pledge their votes to, to Joe Biden. Um, uh, I what? To, to vote for Joe Biden. Oh, I didn't say that. When we start with Noam Chomsky regarding linguistics, arguably the largest foundation it lays on is biolinguistics. Biolinguistics as the focus of linguistics within the lens of a larger socio-biological context. But... The approach is quite interdisciplinary and relies on anthropology, psychology, and the like. Oddly enough, Chomsky, along with Eric Lennonberg, were among the largest spearheads in this newer approach of linguistics, a spearhead as a direct reaction against the dominant paradigm of linguistics being behaviorist linguistics. Behaviorist linguistics being a once dominant idea that language is something necessarily learned and mimicked, whether due to environments social regulation, and certain motivational states. This style of linguistics was an off-branch from the psychological concept of radical behaviorism proposed by B.F. Skinner. Now here is where stuff gets pretty interesting. With biolinguistics, Chomsky proposes that language, or the human ability to lingualize, is actually something rather innate to humans and that we possess the ability to learn language itself. The beginnings of what Chomsky calls an initial state, that humans have an, an instinctive mental capacity that allows language to develop. This capacity is what Chomsky proposed as being the language acquisition device, or LAD. Again, it's worth repeating, at the time Chomsky proposed this, the dominant idea in linguistics was that language was something constructively learned. So, as simple as a proposal as this may seem, it shook the foundation of linguistics. It might be worth stating that it isn't a device like we would initially think as a normal device. Rather, as stated, it's more of an innate capacity humans are born with. 
with the title of this capacity being Language Acquisition Device. This is the foundation where Chomsky's fairly revolutionary idea of universal grammar lies. Universal grammar being the idea that the core syntactic lingual knowledge is already partially enveloped into us, with, again, the LAD being the biological tool that allows this to happen. According to Chomsky, we as humans only need to learn specific parts of our native language for language to develop. One argument used for this is that babies at a young age can discern between specific language and non-language sound. Thus, with the innate mental tools to comprehend lingual sound patterns, these patterns must have some level of universal validity across language. How universal is up for debate. So here we have covered a good amount of the main cursory lingual overview, which of course will be our main focus, but this would be rather incomplete if we didn't go just a bit into the smaller lingual details Chomsky proposed in the 20th century. Known as one of the more important pieces of academic literature in the 20th century, Noam Chomsky presented Syntactic Structures, a small monograph of specific literature that argued syntax, the arrangement of words that complete a sentence in specific context, wasn't necessarily supposed to be investigated by mere sound, by the arrangement of what linguists would call things such as phonemes and monemes, which, without going into larger lingual detail, concern themselves with how words distinguish themselves with said sounds. Chomsky argued that these structures, like we talked about earlier, are rather humanly ingrained. That the prior in look into linguistics, the perspective that syntax, language at large, was ordered and studied more by sound in subjective, often anthropological context, rather than something more structurally universal, which Chomsky argued. Nevertheless, we do find many important correlations, quite naturally, between syntactic structure and meaning. Or, to put it differently, we find that the grammatical devices are used quite systematically. These correlations could form part of the subject matter for a more general theory of language concerned with syntax and semantics and their points of connection. Despite largely different subjective tone and sound of language across the globe, its specific grammatical rule differences, there were still universal similarities that could possibly find its origin within the human mind. This is also the further backdrop in which Chomsky developed later works and lectures such as Language and Mind. Again, this overview is cursory. Undeniably, there are details that have been left out, but it's truly impossible to include these things along with the larger philosophical consequences set forth from Chomsky's work. To continue, it's still important to point out some contemporary context to Chomsky's linguistics and how it leads us down the pipeline that is philosophy. First, the LAD hypothesis has been a bit scrutinized by neuroscientists for the lack of actual scientific data, and even syntactic structures is considered outdated. For the former, ironically, this specific critique has not phased Chomsky in the slightest, and Chomsky rejects the notion that intrinsic discrete data is completely necessary for the development of lingual theory. This is where Chomsky starts to open up more into the realm of philosophy. Here, he has a clear rejection into positivistic notions of science and how it relates to utility or even truth. Not that Chomsky denies science or its methods, just that he's skeptical of the ideological overtones it can create in academic circles. Given the state of research into the history of linguistics, even the attempt to evaluate past contributions must be regarded as highly tentative. Modern linguistics shares the delusion, the accurate term, I believe, that the modern behavioral sciences have, in some essential respect, achieved a transition from speculation to science and that earlier work can be safely consigned to the antiquarians. Here he continues with something interesting and elaborates on his belief that linguistics and philosophy are linked. The methods and concerns of linguists and philosophies are similar in so many respects that it would be folly, I believe, to insist on a sharp separation of these disciplines or for either to maintain a parochial 
disregard for insights achieved in the other. As we are now approaching the abstract realm of Chomsky's applied philosophy, applied through the structure of linguistics, that is, given most of us here are interested in philosophy and intellectual history, Chomsky is rather interesting and quite odd. First is that his core philosophy is within the vein of rationalism, rationalism being the view that reason is the core tool for knowledge. This view is often contrasted within the realm of empiricism, that posits experience and experimentation is what should constitute knowledge, rather than say, reason or rationale. Consequently, closer in line with rationalist thinkers, Chomsky rejects notions of scientific ossified positivism a view commonly shared with continental philosophers. But, bizarre enough, he totally rejects theory as something worthwhile. Well, that's what you're referring to is what's called theory. And the reason when I said I'm not interested in theory, what I meant is I'm not interested in posturing, uh, using fancy terms like uh, polysyllables and uh, pretending to have theory when you have no theory whatsoever. So there's no theory in any of this stuff, not in the sense of theory that uh, anyone's familiar with in the the sciences or or any other serious field. Uh, Try to find in all of the work you mentioned some principles uh, from which you can deduce. The bizarre discontinuity continues here, too. As we saw earlier, his ideas and origins of language are a bit essentialist. Again, essentialist meaning something ingrained. Within the context of Chomsky, the capacity to utilize language is something inherently ingrained. Okay, so what makes this weird? Chomsky's socio-economic and political positions are Marxist in some respects. Most of all, though, he resides within the humanist terrain as a whole, where human organization, the structure of good, comes from human organization and process. What is odd here is that more left-leaning sociological views posit ideology, social structures, and norms as a common explanation into human subjectivity and phenomena. If anything, there's a pretty radical rejection within most realms of essentialism from the sociological lens Chomsky approaches things with, at least regarding people, ideology, and social organization as explained above. Chomsky is a misunderstood character and the numerous videos simply selling Chomsky as a glorified left-wing celebrity seems to understate a lot of the academic impact he has left. If anything, he seems to be misunderstood by the very fetishistic means on how he is approached, whether that be the weird online behavior of people constantly emailing him as he is among the few public personalities who will actually respond to you as to use him as some sort of ideological prop or crutch, or worse, simply by way of using him as a virtual punching bag for whatever ideological mishappenings that may pull at your heartstrings. The point here is that Chomsky's persona, like other large intellectuals, get partitioned into cultural commodities that are often abstracted away from their direct work. In my mind, this is partially why you find little content on Chomsky's core work and the mechanistic, rationalist, and humanist philosophy and linguistics behind it. Rather, what we do here are usually recycled excerpts or citations around Chomsky's politics, which have influenced me immensely. But the problem I find with this is that, like stated earlier, political content finds itself commodified within numerous forms of narratives and almost all within anti-intellectual context. Chomsky is anything but that. It seems like people care more about Chomsky as a persona rather than Chomsky as Noam Chomsky. And hopefully, More than anything, this video could shine some light on the quiet side of him and the actual intellectual work that he stands on. Thank you all for watching. This is a shorter than usual video, but I felt very compelled to make this kind of video for some time. As always, I have a pretty critical request. That is, if anyone found this or any of the other content I make useful, to consider pledging a couple dollars a month on Patreon as to allow me to keep making these. With a channel of this size, funding is next to nothing on YouTube, and it's things like Patreon and the YouTube member section that really keep this thing alive. If that isn't quite feasible, consider bookmarking our Amazon link, as I get a small percentage from that, and Bezos has to pay me a little. Before we go, I want to give a giant thanks 
to some of these larger special patrons. Stacy Solano, Seventh, Nine, Kate, J.R. Og, Jacques Olivier Parrish, and Jose David Guevara. Thank you guys so much. You guys really do go above and beyond for this channel. Other than that, thank you guys so much for being here, and I hope to see you in the next.